I've been in this industry uh, 20 years or so. If any of you guys remember old Avaya, you know, I started with back with them, gosh, 2001, something like that. 11 years ago, I started Vocal Point Consulting. We started as a PBX consulting company where we were just helping clients move from one platform to another, trying to help them get uh, to, to that you know, next platform. But the cloud just wasn't going away, right? And it, I mean, six years ago, we really kind of fully rebranded. And nowadays, we don't even touch hardware. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what hardware is. Uh, I have companies all the time that you know, come up to me and ask me about whether or not we should have techs or whether or not we should you know, roll trucks. I'm like, no, why? You know, everything's cloud. As we got into this, we started looking at it and we said, man, everything is as a service today, right? We realized that there were some gaps in the as a service model, right? How many, how many of you guys have ever bought a cloud service, right? So if you bought a cloud service, you probably realize, or you may have gone out and said, oh, $19 a month. Okay, I've got this you know, cloud license, now what? How do I make it integrate with my CRM? How do I make it, you know, give me the data that I want or the outcomes that I want? Or how do I, you know, get my employees to actually adopt it? So what we noticed is there was no service in as a service. So that's why we like to say we put the service back in as a service, right? We cut, we're the guys that come in and we're the first layer of this cake. So we're talking about AI and machine learning tonight. In order to get to that AI and machine learning layer where Balto is or, you know, other AI companies that are out there, let's go out and buy this AI software and, and then what? Uh, what do I put it on top of? You've got to have that layer of a unified communications platform or a contact center platform that's already designed and ready to implement that AI platform on top of, right? And so we're that kind of front end, or the, let's say the lower layer of the cake. Typically, the model is VP of you know, IT or IT director will call us up and say, you know, I've got a problem. So I'm trying to solve for a particular problem that my CEO says I have, and we're gonna come in and say, okay, great. Let's help you write a scope of work and design that solution and get you from point A to point B with a roadmap, right? So we'll design that solution all the way from soup to nuts and then even provide the project management and the ongoing support. Independent and unbiased advice. So a lot of people go, well, what does that really mean? How are you independent? Uh, how many of you ever dealt with salespeople? <laughs> if you've ever dealt with direct salespeople, they suck. I, I, I can tell you this because I was one of those guys. Um, the direct sales guy, let's say you, you say, okay, I want a new unified communications platform. I'm gonna call up uh, this company and this company and this company and this company. The four of them are gonna come in, they're gonna present their solutions and they're gonna do whatever they can to shove that square peg into that round hole, right? That's their job. That guy, his only uh, you know, focus is how do I retire my quota for this quarter so I can keep my job? That's all he's focused on. We're different. so. We, we come in and our guys aren't, you know, quota driven. They don't care about a quota. We care about our customers and finding that right solution that's going to give you the outcomes that you want out of it. Second thing I want to concentrate on, and if you can take away anything from, from this tonight, we, how many of y'all like reading contracts? Does anybody like reading a contract? It drew, of course, the, the, the one lawyer in the room. Um, contracts suck, uh, but we're sick. We actually read them. So we actually will go to bat for our clients. And does anybody know what the one part of a contract that most people sit, uh, kind of focus in on? What would you say that one part is? Besides price, besides price. So the term is a big deal, right? Um, but Drew, you have an answer for that? <laughs> Anybody know what an SLA is? Service level agreement? Nine times out of 10, 
our customers are going to go, well, you need to write me a strong SLA. Okay, great. So let, let's break that down. You were down, let's say six hours and it breaks down to maybe a, what, a buck 20 an hour, right? So you were down for six hours. I got like $8, 10X, $80. Wow, you bought your staff lunch. That's an SLA and that's how they, they, they you know, make these SLAs look really good. But at the end of the day, the one thing I'm gonna tell you to stop focusing on the SLA, focus on term and termination. Term and termination is where you go, oh crap, I'm in an abusive relationship, get me out of this thing. How do I walk if the crap hits the fan? That's the one thing I want you to take away from this. So term and termination, remember that. So quick story, um, buddy of mine, David, met him at a networking group years ago, something similar to this. David, uh, he was a cool cat. We would have, you know, uh, drinks every now and then and, and uh, meet up. Well, he went to work for a company and he calls me up one day and he says, Derek, I'm at this new company. I, I took this job as a VP of operations and our IT is just a mess over here. And he said, can you help me out? I said, David, I have no idea, but I'm willing to, you know, sit down with you. Went and sat down with David uh, and the owners of the company. We looked at it, they were trying to virtualize their 13 locations to the host, meaning they were trying to run uh, virtual desktops that were hosted at their main location. And they had just bought six figures worth of servers. And I said, you know, that's great, Dave, um, but you know, I'm looking at this, you're trying to kind of recreate what is already built in most cloud platforms. I said, you may want to look at a cloud platform they're like, oh, no, no, we don't want anything to do with the cloud. We just want to replace our current MSP who can't figure it out. I said, great. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you three options. I'll do 60 days of consulting on the front end. And at the end of that, we're going to deliver the solution that you want. Uh, but I'm going to give you three options. I'm going to bring you an option to replace your MSP, your managed service provider. And then I'm going to do a hybrid option. I'll give you the option of replacing that MSP, but also maybe offloading some of those workloads, uh, such as you know, backup and recovery and building in a, back, um, a business continuity and disaster recovery solution into that. Third option I'm gonna give you is gonna be a full-blown cloud-only option, okay? So 60 days goes by, I deliver my report, and keep in mind they just spent six figures on some servers. They were spending overall, when we broke it down, with brake fix, uh, maintenance, everything. We got into all that. They were really spending about 30 grand a month. So what we figured out, option one, replacing their new MSP, came in around 26. Option two, came in around 21,000 as a hybrid option. The cloud option came in at about 16 grand. So my question for you is, what do you think was the right option? What do you think was the, was the option that they should have chosen? Anyone? The answer is really any of them. Because all of these options solved for the problem that they had. It just so happened that they picked the, the full-blown cloud option because it saved them, gosh, $14,000 a month. I told him, I said, Dave, you know, look, you can hug those servers all you want that you just bought, but you're losing minimum $10,000 a month every month you're hugging them. So what are you gonna do? So they chose to go to the cloud. That was seven years ago. They have now doubled in size. Um, we do their, their network, their unified communications. We do a whole bunch of stuff for them. So when we talk about being unbiased and independent, you're gonna recognize some of these logos, some of them you won't. This represents about one-tenth of the companies that we work with. That's why we can be the type of unbiased and independent solution provider out there. Most of these guys on the left-hand side, these are what we would call the unified communications, contact center uh, guys, uh, 
I know some of you contact center people will recognize like Genesis and Edify and people like that. On the right hand side, some of these guys are what we would consider, even though you're going to recognize some of those names, I would consider most of these guys more of our disruptors in the industry. Uh, in fact, on that disruptor note, next month on October 16th, we've got a uh, speaker coming in that is going to talk about labor management. How many of you are having issues hiring people today? It's a huge issue. People don't want to work. <laughs> I don't get it. I, maybe I'm just too old, uh, but I like to work. October 16th is when we're going to talk about, you know, labor management and how you can actually fill those seats, whether it's in your contact center. Um, I don't care if you've got a retail, uh, you know, location that you're trying to get workers for. Anybody that's got hourly employees, it's a really cool discussion. So check that out if you can. So you remember my, going back to the beginning, my uh, story about David. This is really what we want to do. We, we just really want to try to guide you guys through this process. We're, we're trying to get you from, you know, the bottom of that mountain to the top of the mountain. Because at the end of the day, that's my buddy David. We, we want you to get your picture taken at the, uh, at the pinnacle of the mountain, not us. You know, we're here to make, I, I tell every IT director I work with, I, I'm, I'm like, you know, dude, I'm here to make you look like a hero. That's my job. So at the end of the day, that's what we do. Uh, that's my contact info. If anybody has any questions. So remember, three takeaways. Stop working with direct salespeople. <laughs> Number two is if you um, are in a contract, focus on term and termination. Term and termination is going to get you out of a contract so much easier. Uh, come back next month, I'll tell you a story about that. Third is if, um, oh, next month. Uh, be here for the discussion about labor management. That's going to be a really good one. And we're going to talk about how you can fill those gaps. So the next layer in this cake really is that unified communications. Talk about how those communication products is kind of a stepping stone to getting into the cloud. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about AI and how that affects it too. So, um, you know, I always love numbers. Um, and this is kind of interesting. COVID's really kind of changed things in the way we go to work every day. Um, I've been very fortunate that I've always kind of worked from home or I've traveled. So I've never really worked in the office. Uh, but, you know, when COVID hit, 2,200 employees at 8x8 went home, right? So we had to deal with it ourselves. And, and we were pretty fortunate because we had the software in place to do that. And we're going to talk a little about it. But, um, you know, when we, we look at what's kind of happening now, we're looking at 82% of companies looking at some sort of hybrid model. Three days in, a couple days off. Um, you know, definitely, I think this is kind of a good thing because I tend to see, you know, even pre-COVID, if I wasn't feeling well and I had a big meeting, maybe I'd show up when maybe I shouldn't have, right? But if I can work from home and I can do everything I need to do through a video meeting, um, maybe chat via phone call, I can still be productive. And of course, I'm doing a good thing by not infecting everyone else in the office with even a cold that I might have. So this is really interesting to see. So how do, how do you manage that as a company, right? Um, a lot of companies pre-COVID or during COVID, they went out and they grabbed a meeting product, right? They may have had some sort of phone system in their office that they used. Hopefully it worked from home. Maybe it didn't, maybe you had to use your cell phone to work from home. Um, you had some way of chatting or communicating with each other. That may have been another application. So you have all these different applications and how do you manage that? So that's really important. How do we handle that? Um, yeah, so that's what we're talking about here is, is, is going hybrid and, and having like people working in the office and working from home, how do we manage that? It's, it's, it's scalable, right? How do, we, how do we scale it? All right, so this one I think was amazing, right? 49% of employee, employees will leave their employer if they don't have the technology. So what's that, what is that about? It's really about what I was describing. Like I was able to continue doing my job from home as if 
I was in the office. I, I was telling some people tonight, there's people at my company that I've never met in person before, but I feel like we've had dinner together. I feel like we've traveled together because of that video conversation, right? We're able to connect. And even to connect in the sense of, I can see like a picture hanging on the wall. Oh, what's that? You know, you like fishing or, oh, you like that, that sports team. So you really get to know people. Um, it doesn't replace, you know, interaction like this. Like, I think this is awesome too. Um, you know, starting to come out and see people. So, but you want to have that hybrid. You want to be able to offer um, your employees the ability to say, hey, if I'm not feeling well, or I need to work from home, or I want to feel like I can have the tools to do my job and communicate with our customers, how do I do that? Do you have those tools available? Because if you don't, I'm going to go find a company that does, which is a crazy thing, right? That's, that's really coming out of COVID. Um, no one really think about that um, normally until, until COVID hit. But the other side of this too is, in, and if you've experienced this yet, if you've moved like a contact center to the cloud, or you've moved your, your unified communications or your phone system to the cloud, you'll start to see that those systems get separated, right? So you have kind of two parts of the business. You have your customers that are calling in and trying to talk to you, and you have your employees, and that's an important part of the puzzle, right? We wanna make sure that both parties, both people, employees and customers are able to communicate together, right? And that's, and we'll talk about how we, we can build that. Um, and this is more of a visual, I, I love visuals, right? So again, you think about over here, we have our employee experience. So employee experience is what phone are you using to make a phone call? Can, can I make a phone call from my mobile device, right? Do I have to be tied to my office? Can I chat with them? Can I interact with, with my other coworkers? Again, most of my coworkers are spread throughout the world and I can chat with them on the app, right? Do I, can I do video conferencing? Um, and one of the things that we do, I mentioned before those different separate applications. One of the problems with those applications is if I'm in a video meeting, what happens? My phone rings, right? So when I'm in a video meeting, why is my phone ringing? Right? It's not a big deal, but it could be annoying, right? Why is this phone going off? You hear the ringing in the background, but there's no way to, to tell the phone that you're in a video meeting when they're separate applications. In, in our platform, if I'm in a meeting, I'm, in, I'm busy. Like, people can see I'm in a meeting, and I have the option to say, do I want the call to come in or do I want to go to voicemail? Right? These little things that just make it easier to, to do your job during the day. And then, of course, on the customer experience side, contact center. Right? Um, we own our contact center. It's our product. It's built onto our platform. So what's nice about that is you still have the functionality inbound outbound queuing, you have the ability to do speech analytics to be able to record the conversation, analyze it and see what type of sentiment the call was, what words they said. We can do all those kinds of things in there. After call surveys are all available. Um, but then you also have the experience that an agent can look to see is I need to call Andrew and ask him a question. Is he available? Right? Because we're on the same platform, we're able to do that. Right? And typically when you see a cloud based solution, it's going to be separate. So that, that's really important. So we want to bring those two together. Those, those are some gaps that are out there. Um, and then the other issue too is when you look at a, and you look at an organization, there's different roles in that organization, right? IT needs one thing, your customer support's doing another thing. So how do we put a tool together that's able to hit all those different buckets, all those different, those different organizations within your organization? Um, and we can do that through the way we deploy our licenses, right? We might have a, maybe a knowledge worker just has a basic license that gives them basic functionality where we have a contact center agent having a contact center license, or maybe we have a supervisor that may need to be able to whisper in someone's ear or be able to see if someone's you know, busy or available, be able to have maybe a supervisor's license, right? We can bundle those together in our platform. So we're able to really bring those all together. And like I mentioned before in the opening, it's all one tool. Right? So that's, that's really, really important. So I don't have my phone ringing when I'm on a meeting um, or things like, like I can start a conversation on my device here, my mobile device, and maybe I'm coming back from a meeting. I can walk into my office and move that onto my desktop. Right? And this, this is interesting because you've probably done this where you say, hey, I'm walking into my office, let me call you back. Right? And what happens when you go and call them back? They don't answer. It's not that they don't want to talk to you, but something else happened, right? So it's easy to continue that conversation. So these are all things that we kind of think about with the technology. How do we make it flow and make it easy to use? Um, so this is, this is what I was, was talking about, right? Um, and, and there's some really popular suites out there. I mean, if you're a fan of Apple, right? Apple builds everything around their products, right? You're, if you're a Microsoft fan, Microsoft Office. So we're kind of similar in a sense. We look at communications as a suite. 
So whatever you might need to do in that or within a communications platform, it's all part of our suite. So it makes it easy to work. So if you're on an Apple product, I'm not an Apple fan, nothing against it, but you know, I know my family has it and they can send messages to each other and they can you know, move things around with it within. It's really easy, you know, and every once in a while, I'm like, oh, my Android sort of can do that, but it's, it's better to, you know, have everyone together, right? So, hey, you know, it, it does make sense. Um, so that's what, what XCAS is. So eight by eight, uh, like I say, cloud provider, X, XCAS. So it's, it's the experience communications as a service, right? Another as a service that's out there. But, but really, it's the experience, right? That's what's really important. All the studies that are being done, all the tools, and I saw a couple of faces react to the, the multiple tools and having to jump back and forth, and especially if you're managing those tools in an IT world, you know, oh, my, my app's not loaded, what do I do? Well, this app's not running here, or this app's interfering with that app, right? It becomes a challenge. When everything's in one application, it's easy to, to move through it, and it's just one application to manage. So we're gonna talk about that, and, and really, see that, that marketing guys put the X in the middle, tying everything together, right? That's smart. Um, but that's what it's about, right? Bringing those things together, right? And making sure that, you know, you don't have separate tools, that everyone can work together. They can work in the office, out of the office. They can work anywhere. I mean, I can go sit over there and I'll be in my office, right? Using this great office space to do what I, what I need to do. So how do we bring those together? But then of course, you know, we, we have everything all around it, right? Analytics, integrations, um, CPaaS, for those of you that don't know what CPaaS is, um, the, the easiest way to describe it is Uber, right? So if you call an Uber and you need to talk to that Uber driver and you call them from your phone, you're calling them from the app, right? So we're taking communications as a, as a service, like a, a piece of it, right? So we can integrate video. So if you, got, if you guys happen to design your own apps, like for your customers, for example, we can put video in there, we can put SMS messaging in there. We can put that in there. So again, now your customers are having that single experience, right? They come to one app, for example, and now they're able to get whatever information they need. They're able to communicate with you through chat. They're able to communicate to you through video or even voice. So these are really some of the really cool things that you can do with cloud. Um, and again, we're gonna talk more. I'll, I'll end and lead off to our, our next presenters about AI and how we can take that even further. All right, so, you know, the power of XCAS, um, you know, this is, these are some of the problems. If you look at the top, we're not going to read the whole slide. Um, if you look at the top, these are some of the issues you run into when you have multiple platforms out there, right? First of all, you need a company-wide platform. How do we really manage every single individual? We talked about that before, the IT person, the receptionist, the contact center person. We want to be able to handle all those different um, a unified admin, right? So I have one web-based admin that I can manage all this, I can make changes to. And even with our product, it's easy if you guys want to be able to do some changes yourself, you can, or you have a team around you that can help you, right? Um, the, the, the integration, so integration's big. If you're using like Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics or CRMs, ERPs, whatever you might be using, we can do integrations where we can do screen pops when someone calls in. Um, then you could see like how many times they called in, what they called about. Um, you know, even ask them, oh, I see you, you called about you know X Y Z. How did it go? What was the was it? so you have that. Um, and then of course analytics. We we capture a lot of data on our platform. Um, a lot of it is um, you know historic data, right? You're looking at it afterwards to see how things performed. Um, and then we have a lot of real time data too. Um, and then one you know, single point of accountability, right? So we offer five nines uptime, right? That's another concern a lot of people have when you go to the cloud, it has to be up and working. So five nines, right out of the, right off the bat, right? That's part of our standard platform. Um, and for those companies that need hire, we can go hire if we need to. But for most companies, that's plenty. Um, and one of the things about our platform is, is that, you know, it's not just one location. Like for example, we're here on the East Coast, all of our calls are gonna go to the East Coast, but if there's a problem on the East Coast, it'll go to the West Coast. If we travel overseas, it'll go to a, a data center. Like if I travel to the UK and I wanna make a phone call, it's gonna connect to that data center there, right? It's, it's really, really um, easy to manage and use. All right, again, um, you can see some integrations, so some, some names up there that allow us to integrate into. Um, by the way, for those of you that are using Microsoft Teams um, and you're struggling with voice, we can do that too, right? So Microsoft does a really great job with a unified communication, right? If you think about that tool, it does chat, it does video, um, but the, the voice part of it is optional. 
Um, if you need global voice, if you need the ability to have enterprise grade voice, Gardner Magic Quadrant grade voice, we can help you with that. So you can keep the teams as your phone, your interface, and we can come in and offer the services. Multiple auto attendants, multiple ring groups, contact center. We are certified with Microsoft on our contact center. So, so instead of using the 8x8 tool, right, you're going to work around with teams. And you'll never really know 8x8's there, but you'll, you'll feel good about it working in the background. So that's something we can talk about too. Um, we, we're very successful there. Um, I jumped ahead on the slide there, but here's a little integration. The other thing we do with Teams, for those of you that are interested, I saw some, some face nods on that, um, is that we can add features to it, like SMS. So um, North America, numbers only, right, SMS. So if I want to go into Teams and send a message to a customer on their cell phone, I can do that from in Teams, right? Um, if, same thing on the 8x8 platform. So we can, we can extend the communications outside the organization all those communications come back into the 8x8 platform. If we need to do an audit, we can run an audit on it and, and show what's, what's going on there. So that's really nice. So they're not using their personal cell phone or anything like that to be able to do that. We have our contact center analytics. Again, you know, um, you know, after the presentation, I'll be in, in that room back there. If you want to, we can talk more. I can show you some demos or we can follow up later. But we have our analytics on our contact center. Um, as I mentioned before, the ability to do speech analytics and, and look at 112 different topics that are out there and see, you know, are they going to cancel their service? Uh, are they having trouble hearing? Um, you know, uh, I love your service, right? We love when that, when that comes in. You know, we love to see those too. Um, we do workforce engagement management and we do workforce management too also. So again, depending on the level that you need to get to, um, we can handle that in our platform. Um, and again, you know, AI. So, so I think what you're going to find is that we start the process um, and then our next presenters, Balto, will come up and talk about how they can really enhance it. So you know, we collect the data. We can do some, some minor AI things like being able to do bots and being able to assist a agent. Um, we can handle that. Um, but you'll see um, you know, when they present, we can, that can be taken to the next level. That's one of the things that we like to do. We like to find really good partners that specialize in that product. Um, but things like speech analytics, sentiment, sentiment analysis, those are some things that are built into our platform too. So depending on what level you need, that you, know, you may decide that might be enough or maybe you need to take it to the next level. Um, a little bit about us. Um, so again, we offer that five nines of uptime. So for those of you that have, have seen that, I think it's like five minutes of downtime, right? That it, it computes to. Um, you know, we are a um, uh, two plus million people out there. We've been in the Gardner Magic Quadrant as far as, um, as, far as our UC and our, our contact center. So it's really, really important to us. Um, and then we have those 16 global offices about around. Um, here's some of the, you know, the analysts that are out there. I think it's important, you know, depending on what size company you are, you may look to that. Gardner's usually the pretty much leader in communications and a lot of other things that are out there. Um, so we're really proud to be in there. Okay. So, so appreciate the time. Um, thank you for listening. And uh, again, if you're thinking about your communications platform, you know, I did see some nods. Um, you know, definitely give us a call that we can talk about you know, how we can get you from maybe on-prem or maybe a hybrid model to the cloud and what we can do as far as communications wise, how we can bring that all together, maybe engage you in Teams if you have Teams already, um, or talk about your contact center. The other thing too, by the way, is if you do have a current platform for your phone system and you're not ready to give that up, but you are looking for a contact center, we could also offer the contact center on top of that. So I so appreciate the time and uh, um, I'll hand it off to Paul Tilti. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, how our AI works and how we're striving to make conversations better. So we're gonna talk about AI and machine learning in the real world. So I wanted to start with a quote actually, so it's a little deep, but you know, future of AI is more about human emotions compassions, values, and the elimination of human suffering more so than it is about automating the way we interact with each other. And I think that's really important. I think that's something that we always want to keep in the forefront of our minds. It's even why we're called Balto. I'm not going to get into that a whole story, but it's, the, it's kind of the, um, the alignment of the technology and the human interaction, not the automation where robots take over and we all lose and it's really scary. It's that, it's that kind of coming together of how can we leverage the technology to make things better, especially conversations, which we're gonna talk about. So, keep in the wrong button. All right, so as far as what we're gonna talk about for the next hour and a half, just kidding, I think it's like 20 minutes. Um, where, where, where has this been used historically? 
Um, why have we seen a bigger shift in the last few years, even in the last, I would say, eight months in AI? And where is the future? What does it look like? Um, what does the future, the further evolution and deployment of this type of technology, what does that look like? So this is just a quick recap of like the contact center, um, you know, I guess call center um, market as far as, which is our focal point, right? So we're gonna impact conversations at a large scale. So that's a lot of our customers are in that type of market. And so there's a lot of conversations going on. There's a lot of money spent on training and retraining. Um, you know, read recently it's 60% of attrition, people leaving or being asked to leave, and in some cases really higher than that. So a lot of training, retraining, big market, um, a lot going on. Um, and I think what I hear a lot, so I do a lot of intro conversations with potential customers, talk to customers, and when I say like, what are you looking to do with your contact center? A lot of times I get, they want to just completely automate it in a lot of cases. Can we get rid of all my conversations? And I said, maybe so, like most of them, but there's always gonna be some. Um, and there's always gonna be some things you have to call about. And, 73% of consumers you know, call in for service needs and we have over half of America waiting on hold for 10 to 20 minutes a week. So there's certain things, and myself included, if, if like I have to make a phone call into a service line, like I've exhausted the chat, the website, the email, all of that already. And so that better be a really good conversation. So where was AI before? Um, when, like it's been around and, and you, if you're like me, you even see things. I've been in AI, I guess now for three years. Um, three or four years. So where was it in as far as like a business context? You know, where did it where did we come from? So historically, contact centers and call centers have not been leading the charge in, in AI in kind of these technology revolutions. Um, that's a really annoying spot for that. So part of it though is it's really resource intensive. And you know, and Derek talked about the migration to the cloud that happened seven years ago. So we saw a lot of that still happening um, even pre-COVID, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But historically doing AI driven voice analytics, you're talking about having in-house coders, in-house engineers, six months of learning and training and all these resource intensive things that a lot of companies didn't have the bandwidth or financial resources to even, even attempt, right? And so it wasn't really a, gonna be a, a good option. And even if you had it, what was the end goal? What's the tangible result of even putting this in place? A lot of that's confusing. It's really confusing today. The technology space from AI, machine learning, um, everyone throws out these words really almost interchangeably. And I think that's why um, you know, what you guys do at CX Effect is so helpful is because how do you navigate all that? Who's like, who actually has what I need and how do I sift through all the marketing nonsense to decide like what's really gonna help? Um, and it's, it's tough. So where's AI now? So that was a quick history recap, really quick, one slide. So where's AI now? Um, the last year, and I would say probably the last year and a half, has been extremely transformational. So if there were any stragglers that were still hold, holding on to their on-prem, um, a lot of that was almost like forced, that COVID forced their hand. Ready or not, here we go, you're gonna be cloud-based. And a lot of customers we talked to had you know, plans for digital transformation. Whether they were already in the cloud and they were gonna make it easier, or whether they weren't and they were forced to, um, we saw a lot of that happen. So that's really driven up um, a big need for automation. So what happens now is, you know, data has been for the last, I mean, gosh, probably last decade, getting the right data, collecting data, storing that data has been the focal point. We need to make data-driven decisions. So we're gonna have tons of data. We're gonna have Salesforce or knowledge bases of all these great companies that collect all of this data and sift through it. And I mean, not even businessly speaking, I mean like we have over a million options on like Spotify. How do I curate all of that and decide what I want to listen to? And Spotify just makes that up and says, here, you want to listen to this like 90s playlist? Yes, I do. Um, and so how do we curate and use all this data to make actionable change? And that's where we're really seeing AI you know, come into play. So AI can analyze and understand all that data, present it in a really digestible way and say, here's what your data is saying um, based on that and here's what you, the actions you need to take. And that's leading to business outcomes. And that's what we're seeing, and that's what's really exciting. So 60% of businesses say that their success is based on a technology implementation to get them to this next level, um, to get them kind of uh, ahead, of the, ahead of the game there. So kind of as I left off, you know, you can actually apply it. So 
it's much more accessible um, than it ever was before. So like I mentioned, from the cloud, um, since everything's in the cloud, it makes these integrations much more simple. It's a cloud-based integration. It's not an on-prem specified thing. Um, even Balto is integrated with over 70 plus different phone systems because they're cloud-based. And so it makes it a lot easier. It's also way more accurate. So until recently, especially voice AI was like not accurate at all. And I had like the biggest problems with Siri. I was talking about that earlier. Like Siri doesn't understand anything that I say. Um, I can't text from it. I can't get directions from it, which is annoying working like at a voice analytics company. You think it, I could be a proponent of that, but I'm not. Um, but it's a lot more accurate. Improvements in NLP, improvements in the tech um, has really driven up that accuracy so that you can count on it. If voice analytics is giving you inaccurate data, false positives or misunderstanding and misinterpreting situations, what good is it? Um, and it's actionable. So you're getting these insights from the data and not just saying, here's this cool graph, but what does this cool graph mean for my business right now? Like today, tomorrow, to make changes that are gonna impact the metrics and the KPIs that I care about. And it's affordable because it's cloud-based and because all of the advancements in the technology, it doesn't have to be a crazy big expensive project and something that you do. Um, and so that's great. So what does the future evolution and further deployment look like um, in, when it comes to AI? So it's all gonna be based on automation and this really future looking guy with his uh, like Google Glass 4.0, but the deep insights that can predict behavior and create an effortless experience. So, you know, except internally speaking at Balta, we're listening to conversations, we're, we're gonna be guiding agents, I'll get to that in a second. But, you know, having access to, you know, we're in Orlando, so I was thinking Disney World, but if I'm gonna stay at Disney World and I click on their website and then I chat with someone about a question and I've stayed there two years ago and I rated it really well, what if we could bring all of that information through AI to the person on the phone with me right then and they could do that? That's where the future is going. It's collecting all these different touch points, not just voice, not just chat, not just email, and saying, here's this person Here's how to interact with them. Because if you're like me, if you do call them, you're expecting a good conversation. You want that. You know, we can text, we can do all those things. And so that's what we see as the future. Um, hopefully not the scary future. And in some ways we might automate more things. Um, and AI will continue to automate different things. But as far as conversation goes, that's what we see. So now that we know that just being informed doesn't lead to transformation, having that data and not knowing what to do with that doesn't lead to any actionable change, what do we do? So what we need, and, and this goes back to the, the contact center, um, the world, right? What do we do with, with this information? We ran the largest study that we know of independently. We had a research firm do it last September, so almost a year, or a year ago, and wanted to understand why do call center agents make mistakes? Um, we went directly to the source. Over a thousand agents were surveyed, eight different industries, 10 year from 10 plus years, under a year, all those great variables. And 66% said, actually, it's totally my fault. Um, I had a chance to blame the company and say they didn't train me or they didn't train me well enough. But overwhelmingly they said, actually, no, most of the time I was either bored, I forgot, or you know, I was actually nervous in the moment. And in that moment, I couldn't come up with the right thing to say, even though I know it's, I always ask for the survey at the end of the call and I totally forgot. And so it's a really interesting problem for a company because if they blame the training, it's like, oh, we need, we need to make better training. But they're saying, no, it's, it's not that, it's me. And I'm an individual, and I might have different struggles than the individual next to me. So how do you deal with that as a company? It's really tough. And so those lost opportunities lead to lost revenue. And there's critical moments that happen on any type of call conversation. And if you miss those in those moments, it, you almost never get them back. You probably can in some instances, but almost never can recapture that in the moment. So you need excellent conversations at the click of a button. The future is real time. And so that leads me to a little bit to Balto. So real time behavior change. So we're going from learning about mistakes after the call's over. We, you know, what I talk to a lot of customers about now is you have, they're listening to call recordings, they have quality, you know, assurance processes that they're getting a week or a month after the fact that says, you know, Tim had this call, 
and he like failed it. He's in the red, it was terrible, he missed all these things. And then my boss comes in and says, Tim, we need to talk, we need to work on this. And then I try to apply it. And that's what's been going on. And it's those four steps or three steps and then tries to be actionable. And then we know that I make human errors. And I also forget everything my boss tells me 51% of the time, maybe more. And so how is that gonna be scalable and how is that gonna be impactful? So we need to do it in the moment, prevent those mistakes even before they happen and ingrain those behaviors. We're addressing those negative metrics and trends like when they're low. And even if they're high, do we know how to replicate that? Or are we just like, oh good, everything's working. So how do we continue to make things better? Resources and bandwidth to gain accurate view of progress is limited and change happens slowly or not at all. And so this, this moving from proactive, or sorry, reactive to proactive. Let's be agile, let's be ready for the next thing. So really quickly here, Anytime someone's like, we have deep-seated AI and like sentiment analysis, ask them like, what does it actually do? And why does it do that thing? So when I run like demos over Zoom, the first thing I say is, here's exactly how our, one of the first things, here's exactly how our AI works. It understands both sides of the conversation, your side and my side. It's translating that to text extremely quickly. So, and that's not AI yet. That's just like, every, a lot of things do that. The AI comes in, which is Balto. We don't sit on top of Google or Amazon or any of those. It's like what we built. Balto goes through that translation and says, what are the themes and what is the context that they're talking about right here? So if someone on a demo says, oh, cool, great, awesome. Balto understands all those concepts as interest. And that is what the AI is doing. It's analyzing that super quickly and deriving those concepts so it can give me the best guidance in the moment. So that makes agents way more effective. There's no scrambling to understand what to do in those certain moments. They have it right in front of their eyes. It's going to be efficient as we analyze 100% of conversations across all different agencies um, to provide those actionable insights to leadership, and then they can make the best of it and make it actionable. If I say a certain thing in a certain moment, does it lead to that ideal call outcome? Does it not? If it doesn't, why not? If it does, why? And what can I do about it? How can I replicate that, or how can I change that behavior? So that's exactly how Balto works, and it's in that closed loop. So the content that we're presenting visually, we call those playbooks, and those playbooks evolve because of the data. So the playbook you have on day one, it's gonna look a little different on day, you know, on six months in, because the data can, informs that, so it never gets stale, and it keeps moving on and on. So, quick recap, real-time guidance on the phone to provide them with the best things to say. Real-time QA, so making sure we're scoring the, the, the agents on their calls instantly throughout the day with, with no, like, it was a little shocking to me as I was new to this industry a little bit when I was like, well, how is QA done today? It's like, literally what happens is they randomly pick five calls, they sit down, listen to those calls, and we'll like score those, and that takes about 20 minutes, and they'll say, okay, did Tim use empathy? Sure. Did he say this compliance thing? He did. And that's how it works. That accounts for less than 5% of the total call volume. So you're leaving yourself at risk. Also, if you catch me on a bad day, that's a little unfair. But real-time QA and then real-time coaching. So the biggest ask I've been getting since I started working at Balto was managers want to interact with agents in real time. So I get a customer, they're irate, they're starting to curse at me. My manager wants to know that and he wants to intervene. And there's been like the barge options or the whisper mode for a really long time. But how do you know when to barge in or how do you know when to whisper and do all those things? So now with Balto, I, my manager can get an alert that someone's, you know, I'm in a rough call. And they can get that alert, click in, see the real-time tra real transcript. They can actually chat me and just say, hey, Tim, stay calm. And if you need to transfer me or transfer them to me, you can. I can click a thumbs up and just say, hey, I see what you're saying. And then my manager can say that. Or they can say, redirect the call. Hey, circle back to the main issue. Kind of like try to dissolve what's going on and try to bring it down and be a little more neutral. So real-time coaching in the moment, again, it's all about saving these calls before it's too late. So this is actually what it looks like. And we can show you guys a live demo. Or obviously, we can schedule some time to do that. Um, but this is the checklist. It's really simple. These are the guiding points. This is the GPS of every single call. So if you're on a certain call, there's five to seven, eight things maybe that you want, we, managers want them to say every single time. Let's say those things. You say them, it turns green. You know that you hit that. If you miss it, it doesn't turn green. Um, and then if you hit the last one, the wind marker, the confetti explodes, and like, it's great. Um, and you achieve your ideal call outcome. The real-time QA, as I mentioned, it's gonna score it in real time as the day goes on. It's like, 
it's kind of one of those need to have type of things. It's gonna save you a bunch of time. It's not super awesome and compelling, but it's gonna save a ton of time and it's gonna make the QA process way easier. And then there we're talking about on the ethics complaint, there comes the alert um, and notifying the manager to react in real time. So a lot of times like the, what I'll get asked about is how do you compare to different solutions? There's a lot of like voice analytics solutions. We're totally geared towards real time. We firmly believe that even if you have all the information after the fact, what do you do with that? How do you ensure that that change is gonna get put on the phones? And that's what has basically built um, and led to all the different products that we're starting to release now. So built for real time, I think I've said real time maybe like 27 times, we'll get it a few more times. Built for real people, plug it in, turn it on, no complex coding, no big implementation, no waiting for IT. To, to change the content in those playbooks, anyone can do it. Anyone can just type in, it's like typing in a Word document, it's super easy. And then built for real results. If it doesn't produce anything, if it doesn't produce higher CSAT, lower MPS, lower handle times or conversion rates, then it's just another cool technology that isn't gonna produce results. And so with every customer, we're extremely results focused um, because being in SaaS, software as a service, you can rip us out and get somebody else and we don't want that to happen. So your results matter to us a lot. Um, here are some results that we have with some of our customers. Um, just a few different things that they've seen um, putting this real time in place. Um, won't spend too long here, but if you wanna just take a quick look, these are just some of the things that they can experience. Automating that, um, as we talked about, 33% reduction in uh, ramp time, um, increasing CSAT scores, better communication across the board. Um, and that's it. So my name's Tim, Sydney's back there. You can come see us, we're gonna be in that breakout room. Um, you know, if you have Contact Center, we'd love to talk to you about it. Maybe it's a good fit, maybe it's not. Um, but if you know someone, we'd love to talk to you. So thanks for your time, this was great. Really appreciate it. Thank you.